Uh, one of the things that came out of the discussion around curriculum development and the realisation as the project developed that a true joint master's program in the sense that uh, it was common to all the universities involved was not going to happen quickly uh, and if it did happen it was going to take a long time and it was going to be incredibly complex. And really out of that fell the realisation that, uh, shall we say, education is moving on quite rapidly that education uh, and the way that students perhaps prefer to receive education has shifted and at the same time the availability of, uh, of MOOC platforms of massive online open courses or massively open online courses, however you want to describe them, uh, was a real possibility in terms of sharing uh, some common thinking between partners and obviously among students uh, in the end worldwide. So we actually worked with an online delivery partner called Diversity, um, who currently are in abeyance uh, for various financial reasons, let's not go there. Uh, but effectively, the program that was delivered covered, uh, as Bart had just mentioned, a specific element of the curriculum that's been identified, which is Search and Social Media Marketing is the name of the module. Uh, but effectively, the MOOC developed around that subject area. And it was delivered in a MOOC style, which means it's video based. It's based on short videos, very quickly and easily digested, uh, very short, sharp presentations. It's based around a very small set of um, learning outcomes for each of the videos, each of the sections. And to a certain extent, it made us realise as academics that there's a lot of opportunity out there that we're not realising in our own teaching, which I think was probably a bit of reflection on our own part. Uh, but the MOOC itself, uh, when it was delivered by the diversity platform, uh, at, at the time, and we believe uh, still the case, attracted the most registered participants. It was 14,000 participants, as I already mentioned, which is an incredible number uh, when you realise that conventional, traditional university courses don't get anywhere near that number. And in fact, whole universities, in some cases, particularly in the UK, don't necessarily even have 14,000 students. Uh, so it was a massively, massive scale, literally the M in MOOC, it was a massive scale operation and it was a learning uh, curve in the sense that we realised certain things needed to be done in different ways for the MOOC environment, uh, which we did adapt and adjust to, um, and at the same time realised that there was a need for more delivery in this, in this way. Uh, so at the same time as delivering the MOOC, which is effectively an introductory um, level to the topic, uh, we also recognise the need for a professional level, which is something that, uh, in a sense, is an ongoing project. Uh, and at the same time, we also came up with the need for a different delivery partner. So at the moment, uh, material that's developed for the MOOC has actually been put on to YouTube, which is available on YouTube, and is, a, is a, shall we say, a fraction perhaps of what a true MOOC environment offers. Uh, you don't get the same level of community, obviously, through YouTube. And that's one of the reasons why the actual um, us, as and has pointed out, one of the reasons why the actual community is a useful resource as well, because the material, in a sense, of the core contents there, but that's only part of the learning experience. Um, and for someone new to this topic, or if you know people who are new to this topic, it is a good sound introduction for the topic. But at the same time, it's based on the text that uh, as mentioned. It is based on what we've learned from the research and based on the, what we've learned, in fact, from trying to do curriculum development. So there is a lot of the learning embedded within that MOOC, and there's a lot of things that can be gained in terms of this topic area through that MOOC. Uh, so I'm going to leave my comment because, in the tradition of good social media, in the tradition of good uh, search engine optimization, I'll leave you to see if you can find it. Um, a bit of findability there. Here's, here's, a quick, here's, here's the quick lesson on Pokemon Go, because there is a marketing element to Pokemon Go. How many people know what a Pokestop is? Right. That's not too, that's a bit, a bit worrying, because if you are out and about walking around the streets, and I can guarantee this in any built up area, and you see people clustered around a particular spot, and you don't know why, they're all standing around the Pokestop. <laughs> And a lot of people who are clued into their social media and into their marketing realise that Pokestops attract people and they'll say of a particular age, no, uh, of a particular younger age than me. Uh, so if you are looking at marketing um, brands that particularly
particularly appeal to a certain youth audience, particularly a mobile audience, and you don't know what a Pokestop is, then there's a bit of a gap in your knowledge because the cleverer locations are actually identifying that they are a Pokestop, and if they're not a Pokestop, they're applying to the game, to Niantic and to Google, to effectively become a Pokestop because Pokestops attract youth to that location. And if you're a brand that has a physical presence and want youth at your location and you're not a Pokestop, you're missing out. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. There is a, a war memorial in the town that I live in. <coughs> and up until the middle of July, it would be deserted. It's a tiny little park. No one's there. You go down there now, and at almost any time of day or night, there is actually people there. People walking around, people sitting on all the benches. So at any given moment, there's probably between six to two dozen people in that park where previously there were none. Now, there's all sorts of examples of how people have taken advantage of that, but that's an opportunity that if you don't know what Pokemon Go is and how Pokemon Go works, then potentially, as a brand, you're missing out. And that, that's how fast-moving this whole topic area is, because there isn't a mention of Pokemon Go in the book. It might be in future editions. In fact, it might be a whole chapter if I get my way. But the whole thing about it is that this moves so rapidly that you need to keep the rest of the information and you need to be sharing and talking about these things quite rapidly. Go on. Thirsty. Uh, just, just to mention, uh, the last part of my presentation was the community. And if you go to uh, our Facebook page, there is a